Um, so you know very well that what For the Record is, it's a conversation series where we speak with all manner of music heads about their stories and the music, you know, that makes them. Indeed. So great to have you on, Mark. Yeah. So, uh, so. We'd love to, we'd love to start with just... Uh, I'd like to start with with your background, your story, how how you came to to be here on the show. Uh, yeah, so I, um, background uh, is mainly in software and tech, uh, but music has been something that I've been interested in and involved in uh, for much longer than that, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I, I worked for a long time uh, in the software industry. Um, and uh, kind of transition to hybridizing that with my interest in music, I suppose. So, you know, I co-own two record labels, uh, Future Archive Recordings and Interpret Now. Um, and kind of in the process of when I was doing that, I met you <laughs> and got okay. involved with Grey Matter. Um, so as a co-founder of Grey Matter alongside yourself and the Creek Coalition now. So now we're doing these things. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's strange to explain background to someone who knows me so well, but yeah, I'll try and do it for the benefit of everyone else. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, you, you know, <clears throat> it, yeah, yeah, it's also hard to ask questions to somebody that I already know all the answers to. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, I'll try and surprise you. But... Yeah, please do. That'd be awesome. I'm trying to come up with questions that that might uh, be something we haven't explored. I guess it, it, you know, like going back to your labels. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to hear the origins of the names of each of the labels, and then why you you decided, or like, yeah, I guess what the music is. You know, what types of music. Um, you know, a part of each label, and why you chose to orient yourselves around that music. Yeah, well, like with Future Archive Recordings, I had no involvement with the name, uh, naming of that. Uh, that was started as a project by uh, uh, Chris Richards um, and Mirza Ramage, um, alongside um, low little people um, initially, and he was involved in the project as a sort of collective label. Uh, they were trying to do, uh, basically try to find a way of making like a kind of fairer, situation for artists and artists they knew and music they really enjoyed um, and then I got involved sort of very early on but after they had initially like, you know, named it and, and, and oh. found it out and stuff so the direction of that label is definitely more their uh, kind of prerogative in their direction um, you know obviously I have some input and stuff but uh, it's it's um, yeah it was, it was kind of set up as I went into it, and uh, I really liked the name actually, so they, they did well there, <laughs> it's kind of clever, but uh, stylistically, Future Archive has like a lot of electronic, uh, instrumental hip-hop, kind of ambient, you know, indie electronic, it's, it's quite a mix of styles, um, and Interpret Null uh, was founded by myself and Mirza Ramich of Arts of Sleepers, subsequent to that, uh, we are actually going to do it as an imprint from Future Archive, but then it's quite divergent stylistically. Well, not massively, I suppose, but uh, that is more a passion project of like the music I was really interested in and wanted to put together. And the name from that actually, it was kind of interesting because Mirza had to come up with that name. In fact, it's kind of from a bit of a dark uh, position. It was uh, it was a line um, about the null hypothesis that he read in uh, a paper about. Uh, disgusting experimentation in concentration camps uh so yeah it was it, it was like an interesting philosophical paper or something that he'd read and we just thought it was quite clever playing words when we did the uh, interpret null it had some kind of tech connotations as well that's like the logo has like the curly braces around the end and there's yeah basically just like how that it sounded and that was quite a cool logo we thought we could come up with um, but yeah, stylistically, that label is like more modern classical, um, ambient, a bit more experimental. Um, yeah, and, and certainly more aimed at just trying interesting kind of ideas and stuff like that with how we package some of those releases and things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and from what I know about you, more more up your alley musically, like my stylist. Yeah, I would say so. Um, that's not to say that like you know, Future Archive isn't, um, yeah. but like Interpret All definitely represents my favorite, I guess, type of music. Like what I would tend to gravitate towards to a lot more, for better or worse. Um, right. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I mean, I'd also love to to make space to hear about. Your, your own music making you know pursuits and how yeah. that fits into the job yeah that's that's that was a cruel question keep me you know no, um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah so I've released some stuff uh, through interpret now um, and I, actually a lot uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've done musically on there that's not really named as a release but we had a, a series of um, like we did miniatures which were in collaboration with a filmmaker friend of mine which was like, like score a one minute short film um, sort of on a weekly basis and I did a lot of those um, and to be honest finishing music has never been my strong suit um, but you know I, I, music I, like for me I actually quite enjoy working on other people's music because it takes a bit of the pressure off for me to be too perfectionist um, you know, I've spent some time touring with Arms and Sleepers playing guitar and keys for them. You know, that's Mirza that I run the labels with. Um, his, um, his, uh, one of his monikers he releases music under, one of his many. Um, yeah. And, you know, I also like do a lot of production, like audio engineering and things like that. And quite often we'll add musically to those productions if it's someone I'm working with um, that is open to that and a project I'm interested in um, so yeah I, I bet this I bet that I think is the thing but nothing nothing yet watch this space for something uh, that's more solidly what I want to put out there yeah I mean at least you have put stuff out there <laughs> you have you have music on the internet somewhere that people can listen to and it's great yeah, that's more that's what I can say well I guess it's uh, the first right of like you you can some people are really good at dedicating their time to just doing that and doing that as a pure focus whereas I tend to get distracted and end up doing things like Grey Matter and Create Coalition and labels and stuff as opposed to actually finishing my own uh, work um, and yeah I guess it's, it's really a call of prioritisation right so yeah get there at some point yeah I uh, operate the same way. Not that I would call Grey Matter or the Crate or the Crate Coalition distractions. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the, 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 they're well, they are, but they're distraction. They're distractions in the sense that they take absolute priority over <laughs> doing the music <laughs> stuff. So it kind of depends on how you yeah. look at it. Um, they're actually the main thing that we do, but um, I would consider them distractions in a certain sense. Yeah, yeah, no, that is that is fair. Um, cool. Well, why don't we talk uh, your your music listening habits a little deeper mm -hmm. now? Uh, and <clears throat> first, I'll ask you uh, what or who is the most underappreciated artist from your favorite music decade? Uh, I. I always hate answering with like, this is the answer. This is the most. Uh, so, but I'll, I'll so I'll give an example. I'll phrase it that way of someone I think. Um, so actually, I like the two thousands was a period where I really liked music. Uh, I like my favorite music decade. I mean, and that's difficult for me to say explicitly. Um, oh. But like, there was a lot of stuff released in the two thousands. I guess I was of an age as well that like that was. Um, really influential on me that in the nineties, and there was a couple of artists that like, I think really did some really cool stuff that flew on the radar. I guess one of name is Menomina. They're like a kind of three piece, I think, from Portland. Um, they did some really cool albums, and yeah, I don't. I, they got a bit of recognition and stuff like that, but I don't hear people talking about them. And they made some really really good records, um, for sure. So yeah, I'd say they they were underappreciated in a sense. Menomina. Do you know? Does their name come from? Do you know what their their name comes from? 
no, right. from, but I think it may be connected to Sesame Street or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, mean, I wouldn't put it past them because they are quite like uh, everything they do has a touch of humor to it. Um, yeah. And they did some really interesting things, like um, like they wrote their own software for recording one of their albums, for example, because they wanted oh. to try something interesting and like. Um, their, one of their albums, I Am Fun, Blame Monster, which is an anagram of Menominous' first album or something like that. I can't work out exactly, but it's something like that. Um, the CD was like a flick book. It was really cool. It was like a really thick flick book kind of animation with the CD sleeve in the back and stuff. So they did some interesting things. I thought it made, made some really good music and uh, they didn't seem to get the traction I thought that they should have, I suppose. Hmm. Interesting. Um... <clears throat> Cool. Do you remember how you discovered them initially? To be honest, it would have been through like a blog or something like that. I think like at that time, um, music blogs were, uh, you know, I would read loads of them and like in a kind of daily basis and consume a lot of music through that. Um, I don't really do that as much now. I think um, that's kind of died off a little bit, um, like all these various independent blogs. So I couldn't tell you which one, but it would have been some small music blog. Um, that I came across them. Um, they did do. They did then go on to do after like they did like a Wan's basement session, which I don't know if you remember them. The Pitchfork sessions used to run, yeah. and a few other things like that. So they were about a bit in that sort of space. Um, then, mm -hmm. but it would, yeah, it would have been through some music blog that I, I kind of read obsessively at the time. Okay. Um, I'm not sure which one though. What was those? Yeah, can you name like two or three of those blogs that you were reading? Uh, yeah, like headphone commute. It's kind of like ambient, experimental type stuff. Um, like Coke Machine Glow. Um, like not a blog as much like it's actually a magazine, but like the Quiet Us was something I read a lot. Um, there's Drowned in Sound, and the Drowned in Sound forums, stuff like that. Um, you know, there was quite a lot of things. Uh, and there's there was quite a lot of like small blogs that I just came across that I had in bookmarks that I wouldn't even be able to tell you the name of now type thing, but they just quite often had good uh, recommendations and stuff. So it made it. I remember like his getting like Spotify in like two thousand and eight or so would have been like starting to use that made that process a lot easier. But at the time there wasn't as much kind of independent things on it, but. Um, you know, just like going on these blogs, being able to listen, or like um, the hype, hype machine, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You go and have a quick listen to some stuff, or like the Last FM forums, listening stuff on Last FM, and then, you know, happen to order far too many CDs on a weekly basis, because mm -hmm. that's how it worked up until, up until we had access to everything on our fingertips all yeah. the time. One, one celestial jukebox. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I miss the blog. Days. I guess most of these blogs still exist. Still all around, exactly. I think the thing is, like, it was easier to, like, I think when Facebook, for example, just started, it's not so, actually, I was very late to join in any social media, but one of the things, this is a bit later on than the 2000s, but one of the things that would happen is you follow these blogs and then you would see them on your feed posting an article or something and click through. And I guess the more and more that Facebook started, you know, making you uh, sponsor posts to boost them into people's feeds, the more that all dropped out of like any feed and just became, um, it, I think it kind of became a bit invisible after that. Because before you would go to the blog directly or you'd go to some other aggregation space and then you would visit directly. But then the more and more that you started to, well, I started to consume uh, media that's linked through social media, the more that that started to get obfuscated in a way and then started to tail off that, that I'd be looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, yeah, I guess they're still around. I mean, there's lots of people on the Create Coalition that run lists of things like mailing lists or like weekly lists of music and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think part of it is, um, I think just me falling off keeping up with these things like i used to be really into every year i'd make like a list of my favorite albums of the year and send it to a bunch of people and things like that and um, i think that the more that i started to just consume music more algorithmically and things like that the the less i did that um and i 
you know, be the solution you want to see type thing, I should be better at get involved in that. <laughs> but now actually I get lots of good recommendations through Grey Matter and like the Create Coalition started to pick up a wee bit with people sharing music and discussing and, and that's really cool because it, it can sometimes feel a wee bit like a more of a drought of new recommendations that I get kind of these days. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's sort of weird, you know, reflecting on how like plat like platformization uh of of both like music and and like new social media <clears throat> Uh, which sh- should ostensibly make you know discovery easier, actually obfuscated a lot of the things that we were willing to spend time with, um, and like ruined our attention spans along the way. And it's yeah, I mean, changed. yeah, I think that like it really changes how you interact with things. Like it, you know, not so long ago there might be like 50 websites you visit on a semi-regular basis, and these days for most people that list they can count on one hand. Um, yeah. kind of what they consume um, and you know that's that's just the, it's a change and you know I'm sure there are many people discovering much amazing music these days despite that um, I'm just I've slowed down somewhat maybe I'm just getting old I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know I think it's just a different approach that that's uh that people have been, you know, forced to take with, you, you know, in the face of the algorithms and, and it's hard to weigh convenience, uh, you know, you know, like the huge amount of convenience that they provide for giving you stuff that you like, mm-hmm. like, you're not going to well enough, but you're not going to have like that, you know, mind blowing transcendent moment with something new very often in that in that case and maybe we've just settled into this like you know like those those moments always tended to be through some someone else recommending at least in my experience even when you know consuming blog there was there would definitely be things that i came across that i was like wow this is amazing but most of the ones that stick out and i don't know if that's more about the the way that we interact music interacts with the like social aspect of things, but most things are like something someone in particular recommended to me, um, and then mm. it was like, wow, this is really good, and, and you know, had that sort of moment like you were saying. So yeah, just, that hasn't gone away for most people. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the you know the impact is is increased when like you're sharing that experience, that discovery with somebody yeah. else is, is well. absolutely. Plus, I think there's a danger at like doing the whole, you know, you know, things used to be better type thing when it's when it's never really true. It's just yeah. that it used to operate in a way that you understood, and now it operates in a slightly different way that isn't what you're used to or like what you want. It's like with music, it's like I'm pretty sure there's as much, if not more, amazing music being made every day now than there ever has been uh you know mm-hmm. the tools to make it have become much more accessible the routes yeah. to market have become much more accessible uh you know the it's never it's never changed that like you know the it's still like the 90 the one percent have 99 percent of the attention type thing with the music yeah. that they produce but there's loads of good music and uh that also plays into i think being difficult to discover because like there's so much you could go and listen to and so much you could check out, but you only have so much time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's like you create a paradox of choice. It's just, there's yeah. too much to choose from. So everything is, you know, oversaturated, um, which, which is too bad. If only we could give all of the good music, all of the attention it, yeah. it deserves. Um, <clears throat> all right, cool. Next question. Um, then, uh, what, I'm just going to skip ahead to like the question. Okay. What, <laughs> what are, you're going to Desert Island and you get to bring three records with you. What are they? Yeah, I hear this question. Uh, they would change yeah. on a daily basis, probably. Oh, it's, it's an impossible but, question. Yeah. So I guess, I think, um, I guess if I was going to look at like records that really stand out as quite important to me, um, 
uh, so t- t- today's choice is going to be Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy and Infinite Sadness, which was really influential on me when, you know, I was younger, got me into playing guitar, things like that. I skipped ahead as well. Like most people would say Siamese Dream is like the seminal thing for for Pumpkins, but I didn't, I hadn't heard that. I heard Melancholy first, and Bullet with Butterfly Wings was the first song I heard mm-hmm. of that record. Yeah. And it's I still just such an amazing album for me. And plus it's a double album with lots of songs, so it helps if you're taking... Yeah. The desert, sure. uh, so it's kind of cheaty, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, oh, it can't. yeah, and then I'd say second would be uh, Joanna Newsom YS, it's just an album that I just absolutely love. I could listen to it over and over and over again. Um, I think it's a bit of a masterpiece, and mm. yeah, I'd definitely take it. Uh, the next one's a toss up between. I see that's me cheating, right? If I say what's well, been, uh, yeah, okay. Um, the next one is like I, I used to listen to a lot of like um, heavy music. I still do on occasion, like kind of metal music and stuff like that. Uh, and an album that really sticks out from when I was younger was Emperor Prometheus, which is a Norwegian black metal album. I mean, there is this whole thing is extremely problematic, but I just still love that that record. It's really good. Yeah, it's just got an interesting. You know, seen in my mind of you stranded on a desert island listening to black metal. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. Well, see, exactly. The context uh, is probably key there. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I brought an album called Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, which is probably not, you know, the kind of mood you try to stoke when you might be quite depressed about being stranded. And then an album yeah. which is quite. <laughs> Uh, introverted and dark in um, its own way with Joanna Newsom and then you have some black metal so yeah I'm going to be having a fun time on the island I mean it'll be a way to channel all of all of the negative you know emotions that you have so you can spend the rest of the time just enjoying the beautiful you know, place that you're in yeah, to be honest dark and sad, uh, like kind of sad music uh, makes me happy as opposed to the intended so that's yeah 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 so me too you need to counteract the, all the sunshine and, and <laughs> stuff you've seen in Desert Island. I mean, I guess it depends on the setup, right? Is this a desert oasis paradise or is this a, I'm like really struggling to survive here? And, yeah, can't <laughs> shelter from, there's no shelter to be found and fresh there's water. one small is problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, every once in a while it'll rain and you have to catch the rain in your shoes. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess we're presuming I have some sort of apparatus to listen to this music on, because um, like just yeah. having the the vinyl sound there would be. Yeah, I guess that's a question that I should start asking people: is what would you listen to it on? I oh, definitely want a portable device. Like you don't want like speakers and stuff like that that you're sitting out on the beach. Like you want to be able to have your headphones on while you go and chop wood for survival. Yeah, that's true. You're gonna need. You're gonna have, yeah, have to hope that there is like an outlet on the island that you that you can plug into, or you have like an infinite supply of batteries, I guess. You could have one of those like so yeah. If you just had like a an iPod type scenario, you could just have one of those like solar mm-hmm. USB charger things, and then you'd never run out of music. Whereas you need an outlet otherwise. That's true. That's a pretty good solution. I mean, although, I, mean, I guess the battery that you're charging eventually would. Yeah. Plus, I'd lose it within. The first day, anyway. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, drop, like it drop in, in the o- yeah, drop in the ocean or a puddle, drop in my Wilson shoe that's filled with rainwater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Yeah. I guess honorable mentions: Sif Jan Stevens, Illinois. That's another one. See, this would be cheating now, just to add and stuff. Um, yeah. Well, I, that was a, well, that was a real toss up to put in as well because it's a really long album. Uh, but yeah. That's it's a, it's a great album. I think I, I think Chicago from that that record is is one of those transcendent songs that you're listening to and just plus there's like fourteen there's like fourteen versions of it if you want to go and explore them as well. That also helps. Yeah, is he's pretty prolific. Yeah, he's a prolific dude, and well, possibly tied with my best live music experience with Joanna Newsom. With Joanna Newsom, yeah. Have they ever toured together? I feel like that would no, be a yeah. pretty good, a good match for a tour. 
Actually, may, I, I don't know because it might be too much. Like, they both play like really long sets of really intense music, I think, to be honest. I'd rather have them separated out. That's I think it, it would be a bit much in a row. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've seen Super Chin, but I've never, yeah, I've never seen Joanna. I need to make that happen sometime. I don't even know, I I don't know why she I... even tours or anything anymore. I'm not sure. She's been okay. quite quiet for a while. She and she and the Andy Samberg partnership have always has, has always been one of the more confusing oh, things. No, I, I, I can see it, and plus, yeah, I don't know it was really funny. Thing. So I get that. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting pair. I hope they're happy together. He's also very talented <laughs> musically. I mean, he does he channels it into parody and comedy, but like you know, yeah. something on a sure. boat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He is. Sort of a tenacious D type of, you know, type of talent. Yeah. Um, cool. And that's, we'll leave it there, I think. The, you know, last question, I guess, is where can people check out your work and projects and or get in, involved? Well, I mean, the labels, Future Archive and Interpret and all, you can, you can find them on... Every social media and, and on like our websites and stuff, and then yeah, Grima are in the Crate Coalition. Uh, so presumably anyone watching this has probably found it through already been aware of them. But if not, join the Discord and get involved. And uh, you can give me some music recommendations if you do, because I so need them. That's what, <laughs> that's what we're here for: discovering music. Um. Cool. Well, thanks, Mark. Great chatting. Uh, well, I'll talk to you again soon. <laughs> in our meeting in like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks for being on for the record. Um. And thanks. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I can light a cigarette now because I'll edit that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long was that actually? About half an hour. All right. Cool. And it wasn't been too silly. Yeah. Was it? No, no, it's good. I, uh, yeah, I realize I really don't, since, since you wouldn't let me ask you, the music com community or three artists of note, there was <laughs> really only two questions. Yeah, to be honest, it, like, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't have an answer for you of them, so there's no point in asking, because, like, well, I, I struck, like, people, the people that you've done them with, the on the record so far, for the record so far, are, like, Yes, there's this community and they're so sure about it and stuff like that. But I'm very bad at choosing these things. Like, eh, well, this thing was kind of cool, and maybe this thing I'm very bad at commenting. Even the Desert Island Desert, I struggled with massively. I, I yeah. picked them out of, like, actually, when my niece turned one, um, my brother and his wife had asked that as a gift to her, everybody buy her their favourite album on vinyl. Mm. And I bought her 10 because I couldn't choose. <laughs> because so, like, like, it's like what do I give her and uh, yeah I yeah I'm bad at deciding that I think it's because I like so many different styles and so many albums we'd go in there it's kind of like yeah I can't imagine this is the only one I would listen to yeah no I, I feel the same way um, and, and at this point the question has been turned around on me quite a bit yeah you um, just give me so to get asked yeah it's so I, I just have three that I always say. What are your three? Uh, the ones I say are uh, uh, Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Mm -hmm. um, so I could listen to that over and over again. It's basically that's that sort of uh, you know the rubric is can I listen to this over and over again and yeah. enjoy it in various moods and settings. Yeah, That's one of them. The uh, Novus Bionis album that yeah. I shared in the Craig Coalition, Akabo Shai, and um, the other one I usually say is is the Campfire Head Phase. Oh yeah, by Boards of Canada. Oh, Boards of Canada were maybe going to be on main as well, and actually that was one of the uh, vinyls that I tried down for. Uh, yeah, not campfire head phase. Uh, music is the right to children, but was, oh yeah, the campfire head yeah, phase actually has some of my favorite Boards of Canada songs on it. Maybe a bit more so than um, music is the right. Yeah, to 
I mean, the reason that I, I choose it is because it's like the first Words of Canada album I, that I found. Yeah. So it yeah. became near yeah, and dear. But... Melancholy, because like actually Pisces is yeah. Gary, it's maybe my favorite uh, Pumpkins mm. album. But... Yeah, it's hard to, you know, to ever beat the first one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cause I, yeah, I think Giugatti is also a great Boards of Canada yeah. album. And I, well, actually, I, th- I mean, I, mean, There's I think music's one, the right. Yeah, like music is the right. Um, what is it? Music has music, the right. Music has the right to children. Let me just check that. I've not had that. Yeah, music yeah. has the right to children. Just reminding myself. The, 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 there's one song, Music Has the Right to Children, on there that I think is. Roigbev, possibly. Well, that one has been Turquoise Giugatti, Hexagon Sun is my favorite on that record. Turquoise Hexagon Sun. Oh, I'm a little blessed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great fucking song. Um, is that actually, the also, other thing that I was thinking that I would include, but it was, is Tool Onima, because I actually, that was a, the, a desert island disc for me at some point. When I when I went to uni, um, my parents moved me up to the, uh, like halls and we moved everything up and forgot the box boxes and my cds but i remember oh, yeah. the cd yeah. player yeah so <laughs> it was in the cd player and i didn't go home till christmas and i didn't have any money to buy any more music so literally the only album i had was on and i listened to it every night when i went to sleep for i guess four months until i went home at christmas and got the rest of my cds and i and i still did listen to it and could listen to it so i guess that proved itself in an actual context, context of being stuck in a desert island, in a sense, pretty. Uh, it's pretty, pretty intense album to go to sleep to. <laughs> <laughs> well, look like, at the time it was like the least intense because it would. My other listening habits were Cannibal Corpse and Emperor <laughs> and various other extreme metals. So, yeah. Fair. Although interesting, um, I just realised this is probably a more interesting conversation after we stopped the thing than we had. <laughs> <on> the- <laughs> What did you stop the recording? No, it's still recording. Yeah, we could, well, I mean, we could yeah, throw it in. Smoking like a piece of shit and talking. Yeah, I'm um, I actually think all of this makes it more interesting. <laughs> or, yeah, no, yeah, we've got our our uh, charade. Our facade is down, and yeah, know, yeah, yeah. We're no longer acting like yeah. we're being observed. Exactly. Honestly, I think. It's more real. Throw it in. Should we throw this in? More, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Let's throw it in. Okay. Maybe even this bit right here that we're talking about. We're, we're talking saying about it. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely leaving <laughs> in you blowing your nose at the start, then. <laughs> well, I just did it again, so you yeah, need to there you go. It's all Gold down, and I'm smoking That's another cool. cigarette, so I'm, I'm running low actually. Uh, well, you have to go down to the your little shop right down the street. Yeah. 